Welcome to my YouTube channel. As you guys know, I've been here for a little bit and I want to share my knowledge as always. A lot has happened and you guys have sent a bunch of questions over. So I'm here to deliver an answer. You guys asked about marriage and, you know, juggling with a toddler now. I can't even believe I'm saying the word toddler um, and how I'm managing that. And I said this in my previous video and it's no surprise to anyone, I do have a decent amount of help from Zach's parents. They're the best, honestly. They're super supportive. And half of the time, I don't know if I'm doing a, a good job. Half of the time, I'm questioning myself or overanalyzing myself. I think it's very normal to do that as human beings. And I'm just trying to be kinder. So just enjoy the present and just relax a bit. I think sometimes we put so much pressure on everything to be perfect and then you kind of mess it up, you know? So just like enjoying the moment for what it is and welcoming just motherhood and my family. And I'm so blessed to be able to be a mom to, to a little boy that's such a cutie, you know, I'm biased, but He's such a cutie. <laughs> I think the next question will be about the building and how I feel about it. How did I decide to buy the building? How was the process of purchasing? And I think I came across the building. I shared it when I first purchased it. I looked at so many different options before purchasing. Looking back at it now, I'm so happy the bank has a process in place which it does not allow you just without any experience in owning x amount of units to go and try to build a building that was so far-fetched it was just beyond me and i'm so happy i'm gaining the experience that i am now do i see that in the future i don't know i don't know where my life is going to take me i really i'm trying to embrace not putting so much pressure on myself i think we do that a lot and I just want to see where life takes me. I don't know what are my next steps. You guys always ask me, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I do know what I'm going to do. I probably do know what I'm going to do. But sometimes I just like don't feel comfortable just sharing just yet. I'm someone that like until it's not like already there and set and done, I just, I just don't feel comfortable, you know. And I have learned that with time. I feel like sometimes bringing so much like energy of others into your projects and into what you want. It's just like makes it sometimes harder for it to accomplish. I don't know if it's mentally the pressure that it creates. So if like if we're working for something, I know it's hard to keep it from someone, but just keep your mouth shut. You know, don't be afraid to keep it to yourself, to your like just immediate ones, like partner, mother, father or even you know one you know because sometimes it's like the pressure does get to us as human beings and it's normal i think the hardest thing to do is to be a full-time entrepreneur have a full-time job and be a mom i think that we're not validated enough and appreciated enough we're so overworked it's so hard because i'm someone that loves everything to be in order, my house, I've, I've been custom for my house to look a certain way. And I still haven't let go of that, which I love. I feel that I have a year strong still of if you come to my house, my house still looks the same. I did a designated area just for Kane, which I feel happy about. It makes me have peace in mind that if something in that room it's not where it's supposed to be or it just gets damaged. I don't care because I mentally prepare for it not to care anymore. If you have the opportunity to just have one room for your child and let him be a kid, I highly, highly recommend that. So it's really hard overall just to like keep up and do everything that you have to do and now take care of a toddler and everything that comes with having a toddler, especially your boy. You know, I have friends that have girls and they're definitely, I don't know, matranquila. They're just like girls, you know? El mío es un. Oh, he's everything, but boy, that kid has energy and attitude for sure. I love being a mom. 
but I do need my space. I find myself needing my space all the time. Today I'm going out. I had the excuse to get dressed and do my makeup. And I'm always trying to multitask. So if I'm going out with a friend, I'm definitely trying to squeeze something else in. I, that leads to the next question. I get asked a lot, like, how do you manage to do so many things? And honestly, I just don't have a life. I'm trying to maneuver my schedule constantly into different projects at the same time. If I am finally going to a salon and doing my nails and getting my makeup done, I'm trying to record uh, a YouTube video. I'm trying to do some fashion videos. I'm trying to see a friend. I'm trying to do just a get ready with me. It just, you have to kind of like take advantage of that moment. Now that I'm a mom, I don't get that much free time to do these things so I'm definitely kind of like squeezing things in which makes it fun you know I'm happy that I still get to do this that I get to stay here with you guys all the time and just like talk <laughs> what life I live right <laughs> I got so many questions about I guess how do you purchase your first house Sometimes I feel like I've been in this industry for so long that sometimes these things come natural to me and to others it doesn't. Today I'm here just to want to just explain a little bit that things are not as complicated as you think they might be. And in other countries, they're even more complicated than they are here. So in the Dominican Republic, where I come from, you can't just go to the back and expect for them to ask you just to put up minimal percentage to be able to purchase a home and here in the united states you have that you have so many different programs as first-time homeowners to be able to qualify for a home and other countries do not have that i'm telling you in dominican republic the rates are insane you can't even you can't even think about it you literally have to buy from the brown up, expect to be in this payment plan for X amount of, I don't know, one year to two years, have paid off the loan while it's in construction, at least 30% or 50% and then get a loan. Here in the United States, you have loans like the FHA loan that you can buy your house just putting 3.5% down. Now you have different conventional loan programs that you can even buy with a 5% down. I think you can even buy a house with 0% down. That only exists here. And I'm no loan officer, so don't call me on these things. But to, to just reiterate what I just said, it's as simple as going to the direct person that can get you qualified to buy a home. And that person is a loan officer. If you're wondering, how can I buy a house? How much can I afford? Just go to a loan officer and get pre-qualified. Walk into Wells Fargo, walk into Chase. Ask anyone for a broker that does loans. There's brokers that specifically do mortgage loans. I usually recommend most of the ones that do my take my one-on-ones. If you have stored up a complicated paperwork situation, when I mean like your taxes, payroll, you work for yourself, and it's a little bit complex, I recommend to work with a broker instead of working with a big bank. You know, you have to think about banks that they, they don't really need your business sometimes, or they have so many people that have less complications that they prefer to work with. So. This, this is when the brokers come in and I feel like they're constantly fighting for your business. So they're going to try to make that, that loan work for you. So every time I come across a client that it's a little bit more complex and needs a little bit more of a help and guidance, I will typically recommend them to go and speak with a mortgage rep instead of a typical bank. And after you get pre-qualified, the question is like, how much can I buy? What should I go up to? And I saw a video on, on Instagram today that was very interesting. You know, if you had all the money in the world, well, not, not exactly, but let's say you, you had money, you know, and you had a decent amount of money saved and you go to a bank and they, let's say they pre-qualify you for a million dollars. Are you going to go and buy a house for a million dollars? 
I don't think so. I think you, that's a family decision that you have to talk to with your husband, your wife, and think about your expenses and what that looks like. Remember, the bank is always going to pre-qualify you based on what you make, not what you take home. And sometimes there's a lot of things under the books that we have that it's important to us as a family to do, whether it's going on vacation, whether it's, I don't know, maintaining a mom or dad or, you know, there's so many other things that go on in a family. And I think that those conversations are not held. And that's why so many people find themselves in a very difficult situation and what, what's called house poor because you end up buying a house that is so beyond your budget and you find yourself not being able to do what you used to do. And that's why it's so much easier to run. People just think that they buy a house and that their mortgage is going to be, let's say, $3,000 a month. They think that that's set for life because I have a fixed rate. And no, your taxes can always go up. You know, insurance can always go up. And that $3,000 could be $3,500 in three years. So now you have a $500 increase on that mortgage payment. And now you have two kids. <laughs> and now you, you want to go to Disney. And life just happens. I think that we tend as Hispanics, I'm going to talk about my community and where I come from. We tend to not have the best financial background into thinking about these decisions and how really it will affect us financially in the long run. I highly, highly recommend for you to just sit down and write things down and take into consideration where you want your life to go. When you buy that house, what things do you want to do to the house and how much is that going to take? And if that's going to be a huge expense how that's going to affect your day-to-day -day life because now you have to save up for this renovation that you want to make. So there's so many things that you have to think about before purchasing a home. I'm someone that I do not live beyond my means. I am someone that because of my husband, I have to learn and I'm so happy. I mean, it was hard. Don't get me wrong. It was super hard to understand that I had to unlearn all these habits. I had to unlearn everything that I had learned until I met him. I was a overspender. I, yes, I invested to a lot of people. I was so smart with my money and I thought I had it all together. Then I come here and meet my husband and he's like, what? Like you buy a purse of how much you two what he was he, he he could not believe that and I think that we're so custom of of certain things that I don't know we've been brainwashed into believing that these things are so important that you decide to rent for the rest of your life because you want to have x amount of purses you want to own a certain watch in order for you to leave a legacy, you do have to own land. And I am a profit of that. I want to leave Cain so much. <laughs> That's all I care about. I just don't want him to go through what I went through. I want him to live in a bubble in so many different ways. I don't want him to know the type of struggle that I went through. I, I want him to know what struggle is. He will know. Everyone will go through struggles, but I look at that. He definitely did not go through the struggles I went through. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't be mad if my child went through those type of struggles, if not the ones I had to experience. So if, you, if you're able to relate to that and to understand why it's important for me to, to leave that legacy, to be able to provide my son with with solutions i i really don't want him to to have to take loans to go to college i really want him not to have that pressure when he gets out of college about taking just any job because his student loans are hitting and he has to make that payment i remember when i was that age and 
what I had to go through, my mom just passing before I graduated and now being responsible for our household and the bills. And now I had to pay my student loans on top of that. And it was so hard. My light bill was being sh like, literally we, we had no light. <laughs> Um, we had no cable. It was always like, it, it was hard. It was so hard. And today we're here, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to live here for, for forever. I want to be here um, and see his kids grow up, right? I want to be a grandmother, but I don't know that. And I have no guarantee. And we tend to live a life as if we're going to live here forever. And we all wish that, but what about if we don't, you know? So I'm someone that is constantly thinking about that because... My mom died and my father died. So I think that that's something that haunts me. That's like a shadow um, that I'm always uh, not afraid to even talk about it. Um, when others are very like, yo, yo voy a vivir para el resto de mi vida. Mi nombre habla de morirme. That there's people like that. And then there's people like me who are very, I don't know, I'm, I'm very practical. I'm someone that I'm not afraid to talk about anything because the things I've been through have taught me that you can't be afraid to talk about stuff because then they happen and then you don't know what to do, you know? So I, I prefer to talk about it. I prefer to have those difficult conversations when a lot of people don't want to have them. So I think the main goal of this video is to tell you guys that we, all of us, have a lot of dreams. But a lot of people talk about their dreams and you see years passing by and nothing really happening. And then there's other people that they talk about it, but they, they be about it, right? They do it. And I've been someone that I want to be that type of person. And I want someone to look at me and say, whatever Marcel said she was going to do, she does it. And that's who I want to inspire for all of you guys to be. But in order for you to do that, you kind of have to make some adjustments. You have to sacrifice. You have to understand that Life is a game and, uh, you know, you have to kind of juggle different things at the same time and you kind of have to make tough decisions if you want to make these goals. You have to decide if you're going to go on three vacations this year or you're not going to take any. Are you going to go to Whole Foods or maybe go to ShopRite? Are you going to get a cleaning service in your house or are you going to say, you know what? I'm going to clean myself. So there's so many small decisions that will, will allow you to hit that goal. And I can't tell you what those are. If you know what they are and you have to sit there as an adult like you are and make those decisions. You have to say and repeat it multiple times. This is what I want to do and decide to do it. And that's it. There's no looking back. I'm someone that I feel kind of embarrassed if I say that I'm going to do something and that I don't do it. It haunts me. There were so many instances where I could have not purchased the building. And I think the reason why I bought it is because I said I was going to do it. So I, I was going to do it. I, I'm going to do it. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine not doing it. There was no looking back. There was no other option. So. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. But for sure, it, when you're trying to accomplish something, you definitely want to be someone that is determined. And you have to have determination. And you have to be able to look beyond your present. You kind of have to be, like, insane. Kind of, like, understand that all of this that you're going through right now, it's all temporary. And that you will be able to have that life that you want. But you have to live right now, maybe a little uncomfortable. Maybe you have to do a couple of things that you don't want to do. Maybe when your friends invite you to eat, you're not going to go. Because it's not only going out to eat. It's that outfit that you got to buy. It's that hair you got to get done. It's that makeup that you're also spending on. Because makeup is very expensive. So, again, I encourage you to think about that future that you want to do. I encourage you to not click on so many links to buy you know i found myself like oh my god i can't believe the things that i'm buying and 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 do i did i did we really care for these things back in the day 
it's a new 2024. You want to be able to look at this year and say, I accomplished so much. If you can't buy your first house this year, but at least you can make and build habits that will be able to get you there. Maybe not this 2024, but maybe on 2025. Maybe you're able to pay off some debt this year. Maybe you're able to, again, just get a step closer to where you want to be. It's a good year already. I encourage you to do that. I'm doing the same. I'm someone that has not settled. I'm someone that, as you can see, I keep it very humble. You guys tell me all the time, Marcel, you're very humble. And I and I am because I understand that I still want more. And if I want more, I can't sit here and go and spend on a $100,000 watch because I could get a pool in a backyard with that in the house that I do want, you know? So it's like all about choices. Again, it goes back to choices. So it's not that I don't have the money. It's what I choose to spend the money on. It's what I choose to do, the life that I want and what I enjoy. You know, ask yourself that. What do you truly enjoy? Do you buy something because you want others to see you with it? Or do you buy it because you truly want it and like it, you know? So... I adore you guys. I only want the best. I know that these conversations are boring sometimes and I, I might not be your favorite person at times because I do speak the truth, but I am kind of a parent here with you guys. You guys are like, oh, dime esto, que hago esto? Y aquí estoy diciéndole lo que de verdad del corazón me sale. So as you guys know, I do one-on-ones and in these one-on-ones, I'm able to address you guys personally and go through everything that you're going through and basically tackle what your habits are and what, in my opinion, you can do better and what can you be doing better at. So if you guys are interested, I'm still doing my one on I also have my subscription, so I share so much there of my personal life and who I truly am. And I think you guys really will enjoy it. I think that it's a whole different side of me. And I will love if you guys join and, and, and see a little bit more of who I am. So I also saw a different video and I'm going to end it with this. I saw this video online about how it doesn't matter what you make. You have to have the right habits to be able to see that kind of pay off because as you elevate yourself, also your tastes elevate and you want different things, you like different clothes. So you have to understand that it doesn't matter how much money you make. And reality is those financial habits that are going to take you to the next level if you have them. So you have to develop them. So I find myself like constantly understanding that it doesn't matter how much you make, it's how much you spend. Be very mindful of what you're spending and what you're spending on. So that goes even for as well. You know, I, I'm going to be completely honest. You have to understand when I lived in the basement, I used to shop our Marshall. My mom-in-law still goes to Marshall and I want to go to Marshall. I love Marshall, but I don't go anymore. I don't go. I don't go to Marshall. I want to go to Bloomingdale. I never used to shop at Bloomingdale's when I lived in that basement. I did not know about so many different brands that I know today. And my taste has changed. It, it comes with it. You know, I feel like when, when you do make more money, you definitely want to treat yourself to things that you never did before. So it's completely normal. But again, you have to be very mindful of that and understand that if you want to see that difference and that change in your life, you can't just keep upgrading your lifestyle because your bank account is still going to stay the same. So think about it. Love you guys. I really enjoyed this talk with you guys. I think you guys are amazing. Thank you for the love and for the support. And I hope you guys enjoyed it.